Hey guys, what the heck is going on? Sam Cox here with Team Ropire, and I'm coming at you guys today with a uh, commentary match. This is uh, something that I've been wanting to do again here on the channel for quite some time. Um, over here on the left, we have Tyler, a.k.a. Well, you guys know him as Yugi No No. I know him as uh, my friend that gets drunk on Sundays and watches the Dallas Cowboys lose. Um <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Um, and I'm over here on the right. We are playing GOAT format at Locals. And um, this is a, a match that we filmed last weekend uh, at this new Locals that we've been going to for a little while now. And it is uh, it is called Board Wipe, and it is in Owasso, Oklahoma. So if you guys are ever in the area, we would love for you to pull up on a Saturday. And you can find pretty much all of us there on any given Saturday. Me, unless I'm like on the road or... Uh, playing a show or on tour or something but you can pretty much find the whole team there uh, testing you know me jackson tyler cooper uh, casey maybe maybe parker for lucky <laughs> um but uh tyler's over here on the left and he is playing uh blind warriors i think that's what he calls it it is a warrior toolbox deck uh in goat format that i actually think is very very interesting and it's a deck that um is, is kind of one of his signature decks in GOAT format. And uh, it's one of those that I think is really cool for the, you know, different techs that he's playing. Uh, you know, it's 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 definitely left of center when you think of a, a Warrior Toolbox in GOAT format. Um, I want to say Tyler in this deck is maining Triple Smashing Ground along with Triple Blindly Little Goblin. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a really cool... I would like to think pretty teched out deck as far as Warrior Toolbox goes. And he's playing Marauding Captain as well, too. So, um, yeah, so uh, Blind Little Goblin is a card in GOAT format. If you guys aren't familiar with it, it, it pretty much says your opponent can't take control of this card or um, something along the lines of that. It, it makes it to where it is blindly loyal <laughs> to your side of the field. Um, so when you when you think of an effect like that, you, you think of things like, you know, Thousand Eyes Restrict, Snatch Steel, but there are so many cards in GOAT format that actually do that that type of thing where they steal your opponent's monster and you don't even really think about it until that card's on the side of the field and you're like, well, fuck, these these cards are dead in my, <laughs> dead in my hand right now. So um, playing against a deck that I'm playing over here on the right, which is Reasoning Gate Turbo slash Crane Gate slash Reasoning Turbo, whatever. There's a million different names that you could... Um, call this deck but i call it less is more dot deck because it plays like a very minimal monster count but um his deck is actually very good on paper against my deck because i play well i just discarded brain control and mind control to the grave as right as i was saying that and uh, those are two cards that are kind of um dead against blindly little goblin um not to mention you know i play things like metamorphosis and scapegoats and thousand eyes restrict and snatch steel i just milled snatch steel um you know man there's there's so many cards in this format that line the little goblin is great against and it's a road to target not to mention so um yeah so i'm activating reasoning and uh he is calling i want to say six because that's what tyler does um okay cool i got demock so i just milled like 10 cards and i summon demock um that is a perfect example of why i love this deck that I'm playing uh, again, it's called less is more dot deck. And there's a reason why I like to only play four monsters. And, um, you know, it just, it, it just really minimizes your luck factor of the deck. There's a lot of reasoning gates, gate decks out there that play, you know, six, seven, eight, 10, 12, 14 monsters. And I'm like, man, just how do you even know what you're going to hit? And, um, you know, the best example I can give with this deck is if you, if you, on your first turn, activate uh, Monster Gate on Sacred Crane, um, you can pretty much know what you're going to hit or you have a really good idea because there's only three monsters left in the deck after that. And it's automatically, right off the bat, a 33% chance that you are going to hit Demok, um versus like a 10% chance in like other decks. Um, you know, again, there's four monsters. There's Crane, Crane, Jinzo and Demok, and uh, I really like it. The whole the whole aspect of the deck is to get those four monsters onto the field, and uh, you can attack. So altogether, they are eighty four hundred 
combined. And the idea is just to get them on the field or get them out of the deck. And then you can kind of manipulate your grave with things like soul release, banish them, bring them all back with dimension fusion, whatever. We don't play chaos monsters in this deck. Um, so yeah, even if your opponent calls the right number with reasoning, as long as you have like a soul release, then you can still just continue to play. So, um, I'm activating spell reproduction to grab something out of the grave right now. Um, that's another reason why I like this deck is because we play triple of almost everything. Triple brain control, triple mind control, triple spell reproduction, triple scapegoat, dimension fusion, soul release, etc., etc. So whenever you activate a card like Reasoning or Monster Gate, mathematically, you're going to have whatever you need in your grave whenever it is time to activate the effect of a democ or a spell reproduction because you play like three of everything pretty much except for the one of you know like pot graceful um and snatch steel things like that um so whenever it's time to activate democ or time to activate spell reproduction um chances are mathematically you have whatever you need to see in your grave just even just from activating one mill card so um i'm activating I activated uh, Metamorphosis to bring out Gatling Dragon. He handed me the dice, and I said, no, nah, I'm not even going to use it. Um, I just summoned Gatling Dragon by default because that's what you <laughs> summon whenever you bring out uh, a fusion monster with a level 8. So, um, yeah. Okay, well, I went meta twice, Dimension Fusion twice, and it's looking like... Yeah, I was about to say brain control. Either brain control or snatch steel or something like that. Um, and then I can steal the, yeah, steal the DD warrior lady, clear the marauding captain, and then that is uh, more than 8,000 damage on my side of the field. Um, two Gatlings, a Demok, and a Crane. That is like pushing like 9 or 10k right there. Um, so, yeah, again, the whole point of the deck is just to get uh, all four monsters onto the field and then attack your opponent and win. Um, it seems pretty easy because we play five cards that disrupt the back row, and they're all very easy to get to from either drawing them or getting them out of the grave with spell reproduction. Another card is uh, Jinzo. Jinzo kind of act, acts as your fifth copy of um, back row disruption because we play three True Nade, one Heavy Storm, and one Jinzo. Um, Again, we only play four monsters, and all the monsters either shut off your opponent's back row or add spells to your hand. Because most of the time, uh, whenever you summon a crane, uh, mathematically, you're just going to draw another spell. So that kind of either feeds into um, the strategy or it just feeds the spell reproduction that you have a three of, and you can grab whatever you need out of the grave. So it is a very, very consistent deck, uh, and I'm very proud of it. It's probably the main deck that I've played in GOAT format over the last, I don't know, probably year. Uh, I played hundreds and hundreds, maybe a thousand matches with this deck. I mean, I love this deck so much. Um, He attacked, and uh, I didn't activate Scapegoat, but I did activate Scapegoat on the end phase because I didn't want him to summon Tribe um, on main phase two and hit the Scapegoats. Uh, I would have rather just eaten the 3,000 damage uh, from him attacking with Blindly Little Goblin, and Marauding Captain. So uh, here I am activating Metamorphosis, going for Thousand Eyes Restrict. This showcases um, the uh, Blind Little Goblin really good right here because I'm not able to grab the Blind Little Goblin like I have to grab the uh, Marauding Captain. I'm like forced to. Now, I'm going to say a couple things about this. One, that's really good because I, I can't be over the Blind Little Goblin because he's at 18, and now my Thousand Eyes Restrict is at 12 because it has a Marauding and Captain attached to it. So that's really good, and it kind of really showcases like why Blindly Little Goblin is great in this format. Um, but I will say that with my deck, I am playing a deck that um, I don't really attack unless my opponent either A, doesn't have back row, B, it's something that I can deal with them destroying my monster. Like a really good example is if I have Dimension Fusion in hand and Demok on field and activate Sakuratsu armor, that's fine because I'm like going one for one with them or I'm getting to get 28 damage. So, uh, but anyway, all that to say, a lot of this deck is 
holding my cards for the right time. So even if I did have Long Little Goblin or another 1800 monster and I left Marauding Cathador on that side of the field, I wouldn't attack anyway because I like to um, hold my cards until it is time to go in for the kill or like until it's time to just like pull the trigger and win the game. Um, or I can come very, very close, like one attack away, if that makes sense. Um, and it not only puts pressure on them, but it kind of makes it to where like they have to get their next turn figured out or I win. And then it shuts things off in their deck sometimes like um, Delinquent Duo, um, Premature, Brain Control, um, Ring of Destruction. It shuts off a lot of cards because I get them so low on life. Um, and uh, yeah, Crane, Genzo, and Demok is almost game as it is. But yeah, those... Um, those are kind of the strategies of the deck, to be honest with you. Just kind of either go for game and OTK or stall with things like Thousand Eyes Restrict, Jinzo, Scapegoat, etc. And just trying to gain resources in your hand until you have enough um, Reasoning Gates, cards, or um, back row disruption or, you know, stuff to steal off their side of the field and just kind of go in for game. So um, the math behind it is really interesting because um, you run Crane. Crane, Jinzo, and Demok, all that together is 8,400. So that being said, if you get all four of those monsters on the field, then it's game. But also there's other alternatives to that. So let's say we just have Crane, uh, Jinzo, and Demok, that's 68 right there. Um, now, if my opponent has a monster that is 1,200 or more on their side of the field and I activate either something like Brain Control or Snatch Steals, then that's game as well. Or if I got to attack in with any monster earlier in the game, then that, then that 68 would also be game. There's also It also gives some leeway with it being 8,400 with those four monsters. It gives it some leeway because um, it makes it to where instead of a crane, I could have like a dark fire dragon. Instead of a democ, I could have a gatling dragon. You know, I can afford to have monsters on the field that are up to less than 400 um, difference because it does give me 84. And it would still be 8,000 because I don't play anything like Upstart. So I hope that that all makes sense to you guys. <laughs> I'm not just um, like mumbling too much. Um, I will say that my deck is a deck that I don't like to take a ton of damage on. Uh, I try to get crazy low. I think that the lowest that I like to get before I start to play very defensively is something like 4850. Because I want to be able to activate Dimension Fusion twice. And I want to be able to activate either Brain Control or Premature. And that's 800. So... That 4,800 I need, so if something's going to put me less, like say an attack is going to put me less than 4,850, I'll just activate Scapegoat right then and there because I want to be able to, again, activate Dimension Fusion twice and then one of my power spells like a, you know, Premature or Brain Control or whatever, and those all cost 800. So um, right here he is, it looks like he's doing pretty good on his side of the field he just summons a third monster i activate scapegoat to get five tokens locking me out of monster zones I won't really do any good unless you play lightning vortex so just a tip for all you guys out there thinking like oh well he can't even summon a monster well you can't win either if you're not, <laughs> if you're not playing lightning vortex um so i've got two tokens on my side of the field he's got three monsters two cards set and i activate true nade Looks like he is flipping a trap. He's flipping Jar of Greed. Pops the other card to his hand. Bounces the other card to his hand. And it looks like I'm doing the little swipe thing with the card. That kind of that usually tells you that if you're ever playing me, you ever just see me do the swipe card, it's because I'm like contemplating really, really hard. <laughs> and uh I'm probably like about to either win or try I'm trying to figure out how to win. Um if you guys have ever watched me play on a um commentary match or like a um you know live video like a regionals or a competitive tournament or something you guys will see me just shuffle my hand like absolutely fucking crazy like i'm a fucking madman or something because i don't know why but when i'm playing cards i just cannot sit still like when it's my opponent's turn i'm just shuffling my hand like five times more than the average person should and i'm thinking of 20 different scenarios that could go on at the same time. <laughs> so if you guys ever see me on my side of the field, my hands just will not sit still. It's because of that. So it is called uh, ADD, and um, I don't recommend it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, DMOC is getting brought back by the Dimension Fusion. 
and DMARC is going to add a spell from my dick to my uh, grave to the hand. So where am I going to get a spell? Hmm, I wonder, wonder if it's one of the 36 that I play in my deck. Um, <laughs> um, so I activated monster gate on a token and I'm going to mill cards until next year. I guess that's what, <laughs> that's what it looks like again. Um, wow. Okay. Lightning vortex. I pointed a lightning vortex. I think we're having a conversation about the duel as we're playing it. Man, I must have milled like 20 cards right there. I, it looks like it doesn't, I don't have very many cards left in my deck, but I think that I'm getting very close to winning. Um, okay, this is one of my favorite plays of the deck. If you draw Genzo, tribute the Demok for the Genzo, banish the Demok, activate... Do I have it? Yes, I have it. Activate Dimension Fusion, bring back the Demok again. And um, I'm trying to remember what happens here. I mean, this was like a week ago. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna grab the lightning vortex. I think that's why I was pointing at it because, um, I think if I can clear his side of the field, then I think that I'm okay. I'm gonna get in 8,400 damage. Uh, I'm sorry, 6,800. Uh, because uh, I'm gonna attack with Genzo Demok Crane. And um, I do know that one of the cards that he returned to his hand was more than likely a trap. Genzo's on the field. So this is kind of what I was talking about earlier. Like if you can almost get game, it kind of puts your opponent on a one, maybe two turn clock. And they have to figure out something like really fucking quick or else you're just going to win. So especially if you have see, like those three monsters on the on the board, 6,800. Because you've got a monster that's big as fuck like Demok. Um you have a Genzo that shuts off the back row, uh, and then just another crane, just another body. Um, I will say that it's not very hard to break that board, um, because you know, you can snatch duel the uh, Demok, attack into Genzo, banish it, and then you know, activate all your traps after that. But, um, you do have to find a way to answer that board. Um, it's very easy, you can do it with one card, but it does again kind of put your opponent on a clock right here, though. So, um with Genzo being on the field, that really does kind of hurt him. Um, so he is going to attack. I'm going to take 200 right here. Uh, we're both very low on life. Um, okay, so he's going to banish monsters with Kaiku. Uh, you know, and I don't blame him because it's a it's a difficult thing to play against decks that play uh, Reasoning Gate, or especially Dimension Fusion, because you don't know where the monsters need to go. Um uh, I would say Banish and Thousand Eyes Restrict is a good call because you can always uh, not you can't premature to call call the haunted um, <laughs> and uh, but yeah the, like the cranes are never safe because it's like premature it's not safe in the grave diminished fusion is not safe banished um, I did activate mind control um, he did have torrental which doesn't do anything especially with Genzo on the field that is game ladies and gentlemen that is a two zero blind the little goblin. Uh, versus uh, less is more dot deck reasoning gate deck. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, feel free to like, subscribe, and we'll see y'all later.